de ba ye kene de mono asim ka nko ye chiri ya zelo asim mono tutu oma e ife oma mbo de oma stane ebi si wene sere enu bo sin keta na eastern is 24 ay sinon ya dero nyobu na na mma kada bundi ne sere eni nwa kupo ni ya ide ebe di chiche enu bo sin keta isi na nwa ya dera ni ibo na mma na ya ri ke echi na echi ya da gwa gwa Um, if I na boya bifa wo teru no bosin ka ta bifa na we bo morning tea ni dwa kwo e ya bo basta maka ya biye ne me na obuda ino ni mia ana basta maka ngolo wendi bona zo e di ko si de o woli e ah bia flam prime minister ku ni dwa kwo ngo teru no kun ge ya bifa kun ge se ya bifa na ti ya lo nko ni funu chedo basta maka ye nda ni me o huga si ni dwa kwo di chiche no bosin ka ta na morning tea Um, the key in a gear beef, drop what are your own comment in it? What about the one? All right, over to you, sir. The mind of our people, and what do they call it? They say brainwash. How will you not be happy when somebody brainwash you to be strong? How will you not be happy when somebody brainwash you to stand against your oppressor? Ah, everybody will be very happy with that kind of brainwashing, but you know, the elite. Those enablers are never happy with the way that every Biafran has actually waking up. The same people who, during the COVID-19, they, they, they gathered all the palliative and locked it up. Another region was enjoying palliative from the government, but none, no, not even one bag of rice were shared to the Biafra people. In fact, the minister of The minister, a woman that was in charge of the palliative then, even openly, openly in public, said that the Biafra people will never receive any palliative. It is on record and the videos are there. That there are people yeah, are living abroad. And so they receive uh, money from their relatives. But not everybody, ha any, not everybody in Biafra land have relatives abroad. But that was the conclusion of a Nigeria state over a people that they have refused to let go. So, you know, after all this, everybody will relax. Nigeria succeeded in making sure that something happened today. It's just one week. Everybody will forget about it. And they wanted to do it to Namazin and the Kano. After they kidnapped him, they wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, nobody talked about him. So after I studied this thing, I said, what we are going to do is to make sure that the kidnap of Mazinam the Kano, the kidnap of Mazinam the Kano, I don't know why people will be calling me when they know that I'm live. That the kidnap of Mazinam the Kano will make sure that those who kidnap him will never ever leave to tell the story. One moment to have to, all right? Those calling me should stop calling me, please. So, We started by making sure that uh, those who were bragging about the kidnap of Mazin and the Kano and how the Biafra movement have ended will be put to shame. We said that the kidnap is going to be very expensive. We started from there. Today, it is very, very expensive. Today, the kidnap of Mazin and the Kano has become the most expensive commodity, the most expensive movement. The most expensive project that Nigeria has ever embarked on. It has cost everything that Nigeria never expected. I didn't gonna end there. I also promised Nigeria that the kidnap of Mazinam the Kano will facilitate the Biafra to emerge as a nation. They thought it was a joke. So we use that kidnapping to become what we are today. That is the reason why Biafra is flying all over the world. And let me also tell you, I am aware that they have actually concluded to grant Mazin and the Kano Bear this month. We welcome that. Go and mark my word. We welcome that. I just want to put it on notice to every Biafra. We have two goals. One is to release Mazen and the Kano by the activities of the Biafra government. Two is the Biafra freedom and the Biafra independence. 
That is the main goal. It was the reason Mazen Amdekar was kidnapped. And so, after they have released him this month, we will go to the, next, to the next stage. But I'm not going to talk yet until this bail is granted. I am also aware that I have even planned that the people that are going to come as a shorty after the bail has been granted this month will all be not on us. I know that maybe uh, after this now they're going to change it, but I don't want to talk much, you know, so that not to, you know, influence anything. But we are very, very much aware of what has been agreed on, and we are going to be waiting very patiently for that. So Biafra must be on standby. Once he is released, our one of our objectives has been achieved. And then we go to the next one. And I believe you know what it means. So my fellow Biafra, today we have decided that the delegitimization of the Nigeria terrorist state within Biafra land will be taken to the next level. And that's why today we are locking down the Nigeria institutions in Biafra land because it is this is to show they generate money, they generate fund to fund the terrorism against our people. So we are fighting the source of the income of Nigeria. Not only that, if we are now an independent state, we are going to place sanctions on Nigeria. We will impose economic sanction. And because we are not yet an independent state, we have to now figure out how to navigate this particular complex situation now we have navigated it we have figured out how to impose the sanctions on nigeria within the afro land and that sanction is the lockdown of every nigeria institution for 30 days today is the fifth day after these 30 days and maybe they still did not release mazin amdikano on this particular september hearing we will extend the lockdown of the nigeria institution for 60 days. After 60 days, we will extend it to 90 days. I am telling you the fact. And this is going to continue until we will make sure that no office of Nigeria will be very, very opening in Biafra land. They will stay and they will be scared of staying in Biafra territory. That's our target because you can never allow a terrorist state to breach. No, we do not want to let them breach even one minute. Because one minute of breathing will bring arms to kill our people. So we will never allow them to breathe in Biafra land. So after these 30 days, we will give them maybe one week break. And we'll come again for two months. And let me tell you, we are still, we still have a long way to go. 25 days is still remaining from the 30 days. 25. It tell those who think they have violated this particular order by the Biafra government will have themselves to blame. I am telling you the fact. So we will make sure that the delegitimization of Nigeria will continue to enter new, new dimension at every stage and every point in time. This stage one is this 30 days. And this will continue until we go to November when our convention will start on the 29th of November in Finland. And of course, by then, you don't, you don't need to know. I don't need to tell you what will be happening in Nigeria. Because you know now they have seen the green light and they are running up and down consulting with the european union consulting with whatever they are consulting with and all that they even agreed and have paid one country heavily to hack to hack it to my account and the country actually collected the money to hack my phone to hack my ex account to hack my to hack my email and i tell them that i am in finland a nation of innovation and technology. If you can hack my phone and hack my email and hack my ex account, then I know that Nigeria have actually done very well. That will never happen. So, but I'm aware that that is the plan and they have paid money this week, this uh, last week. Uh, be tracking a subscription and turn on the notification or the new kumba to pour your gun in the go city and those of all and we're waiting for them so my fellow beer friends we are going i just want to encourage all of you stay very strong do not panic we have beaten nigeria hands down 
Nigeria can never rise again. And just like the pronouncement has been given, Nigeria is nose diving and have nose dive. Nigeria is a collapsed country, is a failed state. It has met every requirement as a failed state. I don't understand whether many of us actually know what fair state is all about. There are, you know, there are requirements that, you know, category where you categorize, uh, you know, a state and the state will become a failed state. Nigeria has met all these requirements as a failed state. They are now unable to solve their political and economic problem and crisis. And the Afro government is providing a solution to that. I am very, very happy that many of you that are here today are not just participant in what we are doing. That many of you are deprooted and they have come to see and hear firsthand information about what the Biafra government is doing and what we are intending to do and how we are doing it. So you can also tell others. You know, I'm happy that the United Kingdom, for example, had a workshop the other day where they were teaching about the IOU, where they were teaching about the ID card and all that. That means that you are not just uh, a follow, a follow, follow. You are also you know, into the government and knows what is going on. And that's exactly the way it should be. Those who are not yet uh, conversant with what we are doing, you teach them, you tell them, you explain to them. When they have the question, you explain and answer their questions. So it is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We will protect every Biafran anywhere in the world, irrespective of whether you have tied my name as a baby and was dragging it in the street of Italy and other parts of Europe. It doesn't matter because I know those things doesn't touch me. You know, you are just being ignorant of who is Simon Ekpa, you know, and then you were misbehaving. So many people who were doing incantation with my name and all that, we even gave them followers in their platforms. When they when they when they blocked all their all their all their platform, we created and asked people to go and follow them. They have went and followed them. So if if they have succeeded in uh, silencing Simon Epa today, where would they be? What is going to be there? They would, they would just realize now, ah, we did not know we would have just allowed that guy. But the point is that, you know, I came to this struggle prepared. I came to this struggle. When I mean prepared, I came prepared. And it's just that many people don't know. If you think you can bring Simon Epa down, you waste your time. You just disgrace yourself. And Simon Ekpa will continue to stand very strong. When I joined this struggle, I did not join to romance Nigeria. I did not join this struggle to start looking at faces. I joined this struggle with Iwe and Onuma. I am telling you the fact, and I've said this several times, many people don't understand what is Iwe and Onuma. Iwe and Onuma is the highest degree of anger. That's why I joined this struggle with. And I did not come to romance Nigeria. I come that Nigeria will end. I come that they will end the Usman Danfodio legacy. That legacy that every time they will be talking about Usman Danfodio. You will think that Usman Danfodio, you know, manufactured a airplane. You will think that Usman Danfodio manufactured a car. Or he invented one, uh, one uh, you know, uh, Ihela machine or something like that. No. Usman Danfodio have a legacy for killing northern Nigeria, for killing Aousas. Conquering them and turn them into what you see today, Aousa Fulani. That is the legacy that Usman Dafodo brought to northern Nigeria. And today, they have Usman Dafodo University. They are using him as, that is what they, they continue that particular legacy. That is the reason why the Fulanis are killing innocent Christians in the northern Nigeria and the Middle Belt. It is to continue the Usman Dafodo legacy. And I am here to end it. I will end it. The end of Usman Dafodo legacy will start from this year. He okay. said, What well, I am telling you, go and mark it. It will start from December 2nd. Once we exit Nigeria, that legacy is gone, completely gone, because they will not have any other place to conquer. Is it us that you are going to cross our border to come and start saying you want to conquer Biafra? We did not conquer us when we were in Nigeria. It's not going to be possible. Another thing is that Biafras have seen that we have a map. That map has not been disputed by anybody. That is to show you how far we have gone. I'm still waiting for the uh, intellectuals, as our leader used to call them, to come and debate or dispute the demand of Biafra. And we have our administrators, every person have voted in all these 40 states. It is not, nobody's disputing it. 
and that should be and i know that that is what is actually worrying these people because how did this guy come up with map i did not come up with any map the people themselves were the one who have you know presented them their map to biafra government and we did not impose any map on anybody that is the good thing about consultation and of course using a true democratic process to liberate the people that's what we have done and that is exactly what the uh, multi-dimensional approach means exploring every approach every possibilities from every context from every uh you know from every solution that you can think of and that's why we are using this multi-dimensional approach the political approach diplomatic approach and arm struggle approach when they hear arm struggle ah you want to carry arm against nigeria where are they today when we started all of you when we started where do you have the arms where is the money what is happening today and we are just starting that's why i told them you can never defeat this army of biafra never not in this generation not in generation to come not what to juku and the biafra army did in the 67 we were doing we have learned our lesson we dictate how this the how we're going to fight you and we are fighting you the way we want and there is nothing you can do to change the tactics of this fight that is one thing i trust about the biafra defense forces well grounded in what we are doing you know when instruction is given they know exactly what to do so you can never defeat all this time around we will fight you until even if it is one person that is remaining not from the biafra side though because we can never we can never remain it can never go bad that we are going to fight until we remain one never but you see nigeria terrorist forces we will fight them until they remain one and that one will be buried alive thank you very much the afra will come you either allow us to go in peace or you are going to remain pieces and the afra will still go and you see this thing we are asking now that you must recognize the biafra referendum it is going to end in the right table when we, when the stupid and foolish ones have died in biafra land because many of them many of those soldiers those terrorists they are sending they are going to die all of them in biafra land you cannot just come to kill us and we we'll watch you and put our arms to watch you kill our women and children it's not possible so you will die in biafra and your spirit will never be alive to witness the round table discussion of how they are going to accept the referendum of Biafra and how Biafra will come because it is going to come and it is going to happen. Everything happening today will end up in a round table. And we have prepared for that. I am telling you, we have given an offer, very reasonable offer, engage Finland to come as a mediator. That offer is on the table. We have also offered them even flight tickets and hotel to come and be an observer for the Biafra's uh, convention in Finland. Since they say that Samanepa is unreachable, it's an opportunity for them to come. That offer has been given. Is the reasonable is it shows that somebody is reasonable. And the only people that are reasonable is the Biafra government, not the Nigeria. Because they feel that they are untouched. They feel that they cannot talk to anybody. They feel that they can use gun and bullet to suppress us like they do to every other thing that try to rise in Nigeria. And I'm telling them today that or the, with the gun and the barrels of the gun you can never defeat us the more you bring gun the more stubborn and the more strong we become i am telling you the fact so you can never defeat us but you see after the foolish people have died the remaining one will still come to the table and we are going to discuss the partition mm -hmm. of nigeria and biafra thank you very much may god bless all of you in europe to release mazen and the canoe by the activities of the biafra government Two is the Biafra freedom and the Biafra independence. That is the main goal. It was the reason Mazen Amdekano was kidnapped. And so, after they have released him this month, we will go to the, to the next stage. But I'm not going to talk yet until this bail is granted. I am also aware that I have even planned that the people that are going to come as a shorty after the bill has been granted this month, will all be not on us. I know that maybe uh, after this now they're going to change it, but I don't want to talk much, you know, so that not to, you know, influence anything. But we are very, very much aware of what has been agreed on, and we are going to be waiting very patiently for that. 
So Biafra must be on standby. Once it is released, our one of our objectives has been achieved. And then we go to the next one. And I believe you know what it means. So my fellow Biafra, today we have decided that the delegitimization of the Nigeria terrorist state within Biafra land will be taken to the next level. And that's why today we are locking down the Nigeria institutions in Biafra land. Because it is this is to show the generate money, the generate fund to fund the terrorism against our people. So we are fighting the source of the income of Nigeria. Not only that, if we are now an independent state, we are going to place sanctions on Nigeria. We will impose economic sanction. And because we are not yet an independent state, we have to now figure out how to navigate this particular complex situation. Now we have navigated it. We have figured out how to impose the sanctions on Nigeria within Biafra land. And that sanction is the lockdown of every Nigeria institution for 30 days. Today is the fifth day. After these 30 days, and maybe they still did not release Mazin Amdikanu on this particular September hearing, we will extend the lockdown of the Nigeria institution for 60 days. After 60 days, we will extend it to 90 days. I am telling you the fact. And this is going to continue until we will make sure that no office of Nigeria will be very, very opening in Biafra land. They will stay and they will be scared of staying in Biafra territory. That's our target because you can never allow a terrorist state to breathe. No, we do not want to let them breathe even one minute because one minute of breathing will bring arms to kill our people. So we will never allow them to breathe in Biafra land. So after these 30 days, we will give them maybe one week break and we'll come again for two months. And let me tell you, we are still, we still have a long way to go. 25 days is still remaining from the 30 days. 25. It tell those who think they have violated this particular order by the Biafra government will have themselves to blame. I am telling you the fact. So we will make sure that the delegitimization of Nigeria will continue to enter new, new dimension at every stage and every point in time. This stage one is this 30 days. And this will continue until we go to November when our convention will start on the 29th of November in Finland. And of course, by then, you don't, you don't need to know. I don't need to tell you what will be happening in Nigeria. Because you know now they have seen the green light and they are running up and down, consulting with the European Union, consulting with whatever they are consulting with and all that. They even agreed and have paid one country heavily to hack to hack it to my account and the country actually collected the money to hack my phone to hack my ex account to hack my to hack my email and i tell them that i am in finland a nation of innovation and technology <laughs> if you can hack my phone and hack my email and hack my ex account then i know that nigeria have actually done very well. That will never happen. So, but I'm aware that that is the plan and they have paid money this week, this uh, last week. And we're waiting for them. So my fellow Biafrans, we are going. I just want to encourage all of you, stay very strong, do not panic. We have beaten Nigeria hands down. Nigeria can never rise again. And just like the pronouncement has been given, Nigeria is nose diving and have nose dive. Nigeria is a collapsed country, is a failed state. It has met every requirement as a failed state. I don't understand whether many of us actually know what failed state is all about. There are, you know, there are requirements that, you know, the category where you categorize, uh, you know, a state and the state will become a failed state. Nigeria has met all these requirements as a failed state. They are now unable to solve their political and economic problem and crisis. And Biafra government is providing a solution to that. I am very, very happy that many of you that are here today are not just participants in what we are doing, that many of you are deep rooted and have come to see and hear firsthand information about what the Biafra government is doing and what we are intending to do and how we are doing it. So you can also tell others.
you know, I'm happy that the United Kingdom, for example, had a workshop the other day where they were teaching about the IOU, where they were teaching about the ID card and all that. That means that you are not just uh, a follow, a follow, follow. You are also, you know, into the government and knows what is going on. And that's exactly the way you should be. Those who are not yet uh, conversant with what we are doing, you teach them. You tell them, you explain to them. When they have the question, you explain and answer their questions. So it is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We will protect every Biafran anywhere in the world, irrespective of whether you have tied my name as a baby and was dragging it in the street of Italy and other parts of Europe. It doesn't matter because I know those things doesn't touch me. You know, you are just being ignorant of who is Simon Ekpa, you know, and then you were misbehaving. So many people who were doing incantation with my name and all that, we even gave them followers in their platforms. When they, when they, when they blocked all their, all their, all their platform, we created and asked people to go and follow them. They have went and followed them. So if, if they have succeeded in uh, silencing Simon Ekpa today, where would they be? What is going to be their, they would, they would just realize now, ah, we did not know we would have just allowed that guy. But the point is that, you know, I came to this struggle prepared. I came to this struggle. When I mean prepared, I came prepared. And it's just that many people don't know. If you think you can bring Simon Ekpa down, you waste your time. You just disgrace yourself. And Simon Ekpa will continue to stand very strong. When I joined this struggle, I did not join to romance Nigeria. I did not join this struggle to start looking at faces. I joined this struggle with Iwe and Onuma. I am telling you the fact, and I've said this several times, many people don't understand what is Iwe and Onuma. Iwe and Onuma is the highest degree of anger. That's why I joined this struggle with. And I did not come to romance Nigeria. I come that Nigeria will end. I come that they will end the Usman Danfodio legacy. That legacy that every time they will be talking about Usman Danfodio, you will think that Usman Danfodio, you know, manufactured aeroplane. You will think that Usman Danfodio manufactured a car. Or he invented one, uh, one, uh, you know, uh, Ihela machine or something like that. No. Usman Danfodio have a legacy for killing Northern Nigeria, for killing Aousas, conquering them and turn them into what you see today outside of Fulani. That is the legacy that Usman Danfodio brought to Northern Nigeria. And today, they have Usman Danfodio University. They are using him as... That is what they, they continue that particular legacy. That is the reason why the Fulanis are killing innocent Christians in the Northern Nigeria and the Middle Belt. It is to continue the Usman Danfodio legacy. And I am here to end it. I will end it. The end of Usman Danfodio legacy will start from this year. Because he what said... What I am telling you, go and mark it. It will start from December 2nd. Once we exit Nigeria, that legacy is gone. Completely gone. Because they will not have any other place to conquer. Is it us that you are going to cross our border to come and start saying we want to conquer Biafra? We did not conquer us when we were in Nigeria. It's not going to be possible. Another thing is that Biafras have seen that we have a map. That map has not been disputed by anybody. That is to show you how far we have gone. I'm still waiting for the uh, intellectuals, as our leader used to call them, to come and debate or dispute the, the map of Biafra. And we have our administrators, every person have voted in all these 40 states. It is not, nobody is disputing it. And that should be, and I know that that is what is actually worrying these people. Because how did this guy come up with map? I did not come up with any map. The people themselves were the one who have, you know, presented them their map to Biafra government and we did not impose any map on anybody. That is the good thing about consultation and, of course, using a true democratic process to liberate the people. That's what we have done. And that is exactly what the uh, multidimensional approach means. Exploring every approach, every possibilities from every context from every, uh, you know, from every solution that you can think of. And that's why we are using this multidimensional approach, the political approach, diplomatic approach, and arm struggle approach. When they hear arm struggle, ah, you want to carry arm against Nigeria, where are they today? When we started, all of you, when we started, where do you have the arms? Where is the money? What is happening today? 
and we are just starting. That's why I told them, you can never defeat this army of the Africa. Never. Not in this generation. Not in generation to come. Not what Ojuku and the Biafra army did in the 67 we were doing. We have learned our lesson. We dictate how this war, the how we are going to fight you. And we are fighting you the way we want. And there is nothing you can do to change the tactics of this fight. That is one thing I trust about the Biafra Defense Forces. Well grounded in what we are doing. You know, when instruction is given, they know exactly what to do. So you can never defeat all this time around. We will fight you until, even if it is one person that is remaining, not from the Biafra side, though, because we can never, we can never remain. It can never go bad that we are going to fight until we remain one. Never. But you see, Nigeria terrorist forces we will fight them until they remain one, and that one will be buried alive. Thank you very much. Biafra will come. You either allow us to go in peace, or you are going to remain pieces, and Biafra will still go. And you see this thing we are asking now, that you must recognize the Biafra referendum. It is going to end in the round table. When we, when the stupid and foolish ones have died in Biafra land, because many of them, many of those soldiers, those terrorists they are sending, they are going to die, all of them, in Biafra land. You cannot just come to kill us and we watch you and fold our arms to watch you kill our women and children. It's not possible. So you will die in Biafra and your spirit will never be alive to witness the round table discussion of how they are going to accept the referendum of Biafra and how Biafra will come. Because it is going to come and it is going to happen. Everything happening today will end up in a round table. And we have prepared for that. I am telling you. We have given an offer, very reasonable offer, engage Finland to come as a mediator. That offer is on the table. We have also offered them even flight ticket and hotel to come and be an observer for the Biafra's uh, convention in Finland. Since they say that Samanekpa is unreachable, it's an opportunity for them to come. That offer has been given. Is the reasonable, is it shows that somebody is reasonable. And the only people that are reasonable is the Biafra government, not in Nigeria. Because they feel that they are untouched. They feel that they cannot talk to anybody. They feel that they can use gun and bullet to suppress us like they do to every other thing that try to rise in Nigeria. And I'm telling them today that or the, with the gun and the barrels of the gun, you can never defeat us. The more you bring gun, the more stubborn and the more strong we become. I am telling you the fact. So you can never defeat us. But you see, after the foolish people have died, the remaining one will still come to the table and we are going to discuss the partition mm -hmm. of Nigeria and Biafra. Thank you very much. May God bless all of you in Europe. A woman again, Darlin and Umu Umife, Kunusi Venezuela, and Edward Bona, Eastern is twenty four, Nobosin Katina, Boya, Morning Tea, Una Nugunu, Yabife, Bogolioka, Yabife, Maze, Simon Epa, Bobia Fran, Prime Minister, or Biafran Public Government in Esai, Edicosi, Duna Focosia, Ada, Nira Hupo, a Geniki will equal Bastama Kayabi Fenda, Nino Hugasi, Nidra Hupo, the teacher. Uh, drop on here on the comment section below. Also, the pocket be a bobbin and carbo bosses guinea so you like need a four or in a four. Ya be on your new eye, cabal, okay, like here. Antono on no notification. Share where code the windows on Munai the neighbor DT Chaka. Downloading any bomb and again. Okay, now the Daniel, when you do your partner, you know, but I came a Siano Munim.